Catherine illustrating how it is a very much a multi-layered conflict. Catherine, thank you very much indeed. Let's come back now to Ines uh, here uh, in the museum. Uh, we're amongst all these artefacts of the war. You've mentioned about your own family's involvement. Um, we see the report. I'm looking at your face as it's going out. I feel heartbroken watching that. How do you feel? You know, I'll tell you this. The other day I picked up my son from school and I asked him, how was your day? Like any mother or father would do. And he looked at me and he said, you know, it was a pretty good day. We only had one air raid alert. And that struck me. That is not how I want How old child. is your son? He's 10. 10 years 10, old. Fourth grade. So this is not how I wanted my child, but the childhood of my kid mm -hmm. to, to go. Um, and, and then there are millions of other kids who are separated from their parents. There are kids, of course, who lost their parents. There are kids, which is probably most heartbreaking, who are, have been abducted by Russia and, and are taken to, to Russian Federation in unknown locations. So, so this is indeed very difficult for us to accept. But also, I have another wisdom to share from my son. Uh, the other day, when Joe Biden came here to Kiev, I met my son in the evening and I said, do you know who came to Kiev? And he said, yes, I know Joe Biden. Dad told me already by that time. And I asked him, how do you think why Joe Biden came to Kiev? He looks at me and he says, you know, I think he came because we are unstoppable and we continue to fight. It, that's the resilience that I think yes. many people are really waking up to about, about Ukraine. Yeah. You mentioned the children have been abducted. Yes. Um, 6,000, according to the Yale investigation on that one, sponsored by the US State Department. Um, 6,000 perhaps is perhaps yes. just the tip of the iceberg. Indeed, just like any other numbers, the number of, of casualties is also very, you know, the, the very minimum that we can definitely prove, but the numbers are probably bigger. But we know that this is a massive issue. I'll give you an example, which is just, just so hypocritical, I can't even imagine that. Uh, Russia has the Children's Rights Commissioner, and the Children's Rights Commissioner of Russia adopted one of the children that they have abducted from Mariupol. And she's running around the Russian television saying that she's, a, she's such a good person and she encourages everybody else to do that. Just imagine that. A country official saying that, hey, there are the kids for grabs, you know. This is unbelievable. This is so heartbreaking. I can't believe what the parents of those kids feel. Or if they don't have parents, but they have other relatives. Majority of them have relatives. It's just heartbreaking. Uh, and Russia admit that these children are being put into um, basically the education do. camps. It's basically brainwashing. Exactly. And they've been, actually they've been trying to do that even in the occupied territories in Kherson. I've seen a heartbreaking video on September 1st. The new school year begins, and they have put a few kids that are left in Kherson. Majority have left, of course. They have put them and they've forced those kids to wave Russian flags and to sing Russian anthem. And I'm looking there, there are kids who are 14, 15, 16 years old, who have grown up, lived all their life in Ukraine, and suddenly they've been forced, basically raped into singing Russian anthem and praising the, the, the person who, who's been killing uh, his friends, relatives, neighbors, and so on and so forth. They're doing that, they're brainwashing the kids, act of genocide in itself, uh, part of their big agenda to destroy Ukrainian nation. Indeed, it's worth pointing out before I leave you into that, the, 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 this idea of the re-education camp comes from Russia's own literature. It's not something that we are characterising, it's what Russia's actually described it as. Ines Solson, thank you very much indeed. Uh, keep well and uh, keep, uh, keep doing your, your excellent work to help all the people around you. Ines Solson, uh, opposition MP here in uh, Ukraine.